Hello everyone and welcome to task number nine. In this task, we are going to understand the theory and intuition behind naive Bayes classifiers. All right, if you guys remember from the previous task, which is task eight, is that we have been able to apply all the um, skills that we learned before. We have been able to remove punctuations from text. We have been able to remove any stop words from text. We have been able to perform count vectorization or tokenization and we have been able to come up with our data which is our x and our y our input and our output and now we're pretty much ready to apply our naive base classifiers but before we do that let's go ahead and spend i would say 10 minutes or so covering the theory and intuition behind it before we actually apply it so first question is what is naive base classifiers so naive Bayes is a classification technique that is based on Bayes' theorem. So let's assume, just for the sake of this task, or for this example, is that you work as a data scientist at a bank, for example, and you are trying to predict, or kind of um, make, make a, a classification predictions, whether a customer is eligible to retire or not. Okay, so basically you are sitting right there, you have a customer coming in, you ask them, two questions. What's your age? So that's the first feature. And you ask them the second question, which is how much savings do you have? And then based on these basically features, you would be able to predict or just tell them right away, are you eligible to retire or not? Okay. So here is the data that I had beforehand. So we collected all this data from our customers. And we have basically here two classes. One of them is blue and these are the class one. And in class one, we have 40 points. And this is what we call the retiring class. That's the class that is eligible to retire. And we have a lot of data points. We actually have 40 blue points. And we have another class, and that's the other customers who are not eligible to retire. And that's what we call it class zero, and they are no retire. And we have 20 red points in this case, okay? All right. And now you're sitting at the bank and you have a new customer, that green dot in here, and the customer gave you his or her features. So the customer gave you the age and the savings, and now the golden question, okay, which class would this point belong to? Should I tell the customer, should you retire? Are you eligible to retire or not? This is basically the question mark that I have here, okay? All right, so what we do is that we are going to calculate two um, elements. First, we're going to calculate what we call it prior probability. And then in the next step, we're going to calculate what we call it the likelihood. That's step two. And then we are going to obtain what we call it posterior probability. And that's in step number three. And after we do this, then we would be able to answer the question to our client or our customer, whether they are eligible to retire or not. So let's go ahead with the first step, which is prior probability. So here, as you guys can see here, Points can be classified as either red or blue, and our task is simply to classify a new point to either red or blue. So the prior probability is, since we have more blue points compared to the red points, so the blue here are a lot more, almost double, so we have 40 points, here we have 20 points. So what we could say, we could say, you know what, this new point in here, the new data point, it will belong to the more common class it will belong to the blue class, basically. Why? Because this is the class that it has more data points. And that's what we call it prior probability. This is like, think of this as like kind of a, a naive guess. You're just making like a, like, a, like a basic guess with no information, just ba very basic information, which is I have more blue points than red points, then this point will belong to the blue class. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So the prior probability for red here is the number of red points divided by the total number of points. So here I have 20 red points, so I have 20, divided by the overall number of points, which is 40 plus 20, that will be 60. And I can calculate as well the prior probability for the blue class, which is the number of blue points, which is 40, divided by the total number of points, which is 60. So now I've calculated the prior probability for both classes. Okay, so that's the first step, which is the prior probability. The second step, which is the likelihood. Okay, so 
let's take a look at this point in here. So what we do is that we draw a circle, okay, around that point, okay? And what we do is that we calculate the likelihood. So based on the vicinity, based on that area or that zone that I selected around the point, I can come up with what we call it the likelihood, which is based on how many points around me. So are, do I have more red points or do I have more blue points? Then I would be able to make or get another piece of information, which is what we call it the likelihood. So for the new point, if there are more blue points in the vicinity, it is more likely that the new point will be classified as blue. So here, as you guys can see here, I have more red points compared to the blue points. Then this point is classified as red. So this class is the this point belongs to the non-retiring class, which is class number zero here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the calculation. So the likelihood of X being red is the number of red points in the vicinity. Please note, and that might be a little bit confusing, is that we actually ignore the new point that we are trying to classify. Okay, this is a new, a new point, just out of the equation. Now I have, in total, I have four, right? And in the vicinity here, I have three red and one blue. Okay, that's all what I have. So the likelihood of X being red is the number of red points in the vicinity, which is one, two, and three, which is three, divided by the total number of red points, which is all what I have here, which is, which is basically 20 points. And the likelihood of X being blue is the number of blue points in the vicinity, which is only one, divided by the total number of blue points, which is 40 here in this case. So now I have been able to obtain or come up with the likelihood, which is a second parameter. Now I'm pretty much ready to simply multiply these two together and come up with the posterior probability. Okay, so let's combine the prior probability and the likelihood to calculate the posterior. So the prior probabilities, simply put, suggest that X may be classified as blue because there are twice as much blue points. Okay, well the likelihood suggests that X will actually belong to the red class because there are more red points in the vicinity of X. Okay, so one of them simply take a look at the overall number of points and the other one, just take a look at the vicinity, okay? And simply what Bayes' rule does, it just combines both of them to come up with the posterior probability. So the posterior probability of X being red is simply the multiplication of the prior probability of red times the likelihood of X being red. And the posterior probability of X being blue is the prior probability of blue multiplied by the likelihood of X being blue. So simply put, I can go up here and I can multiply simply 20 divided by 6 times 3 divided by 20. So if I do that, 20 divided by 6, 3 divided by 20, I will come up with the posterior probability of X being red, which is equals to 1 over 20. And I will come up with a posterior probability of X being blue, which is 1 divided by 60. And simply put, based on these two numbers, I can just finally tell my customer whether you belong to the retiring class or the non-retiring class. So I can simply go ahead and tell them, well, which one is bigger? So one over 20 is higher than one over 60. So I can simply say that the X will be classified as belonging to the red class, which is non-retiring class, since it has larger posterior probability in this case. Okay, all right. So simply put, that's what by naive Bayes, uh, or how naive Bayes work. It's actually really simple. We do three calculations. We calculate the prior probability, the likelihood, and then the posterior, and that's all what it is. So let's take a look at an one equation that basically summarizes all that information to us. So all that is just you know an explanation for you guys, kind of visually or graphically, just to get an idea of what we are talking about. But here, this is the real deal. That's the actual equation that you need to go ahead and substitute in it. So here we go. So the probability of retiring, okay, the probability of someone belongs to the retiring class, given, this is the line here, the dash here, given X, X are the new customer's features, which is basically age and savings. So again, the customer will come in, they will give me their age and their savings, and then I should predict their, are they willing to retire or are they eligible to retire or not. So the probability of retiring given the customer's basically features 
which is age and savings, will be equals to the probability of X given retiring, which is simply our likelihood. So this one is our likelihood, which is what we calculated before. Multiply it by the probability of retire. So as you guys can see here, P retire given X is the probability of customer retiring given his or her features, such as age and savings. That's what we have here. And the probability of retire, which is what we have here, this is the prior probability of retiring, is the prior probability of retiring without any prior knowledge. So that's, again, simply just a naive guess in, in the beginning. And Px given retire, that's our likelihood. That's what we calculated before in the vicinity, if you guys remember. That's when we draw a circle and we came up with, this, with these numbers. And then the last one, and that's a little bit tricky, so please stay tuned in here and just a little bit focus. So P of X, that's what we call the marginal likelihood. So the marginal likelihood, this is the probability of any point that is added lies into the circle, okay? So I know it might sound a little bit confusing, so just before uh, doing anything, let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers just to get an idea of what we are talking about, okay? So this is the equation here, again, probability of someone, of a probability of a customer to retire given their features equals to, you calculate the likelihood, you multiply that by the prior probability of retiring, and you simply divide by the marginal likelihood, okay? So let's take a look at the first equation, or the first element, which is probability of someone retiring without any prior knowledge. That's, again, the prior uh, probability, which is simply equals to the number of retiring divided by the total observations. Simply put, I go up here, here I have 40 data points divided by 40 plus 20, which is 60 in total. So I can simply go here, would be 40 divided by 60. The probability of X given retire, which is what we have here, that's the likelihood, which is again what we calculated before. If you guys go back, if you remember the likelihood, we simply came here, we saw how many points, so I had only one blue point in the vicinity, divided by all the number of blue points, okay? Which is simply here, one divided by 40. And now to the tricky part, which is P of X, which is the marginal likelihood. This is simply the number of similar observations divided by the total number of points. So what we do here, okay, is that we simply draw a circle, okay? Again, please, Remember that we are not talking about the green dot. This is out of the equation. That's actually not there, okay? And what we do is that we assume that all the dot dots here in the vicinity, all of them belong to the same class, okay? So all of them here, how many points we have? Again, ignore the color, ignore the class. We have one, two, three, and four. So in total, I have four points, right? And that's the number of similar observations in the vicinity, okay? So now I have four. And if I divide that by the total number of points, which is 60, now I've been able to calculate our marginal likelihood, okay? And now I can simply go ahead and substitute in my equation. So the probability of someone retiring given their features is 40 divided by 60 times 1 divided by 40 divided by the prior, uh, the marginal likelihood, which is 4 divided by 60. And that will give me 0.25. So the probability for someone to actually um, given their features. So again, the new customer gave us their age, gave us their savings, and the probability of that customer of retiring is actually 25% only. So the probability of that customer not retiring is one minus 0.25, which is simply 0.75, which makes sense. So now basically this customer is not eligible to retire. So just to clarify the difference between what we have done here which is basically step one, two, and three, is that we have been able to obtain the, uh, the posterior probability, as you guys can see here, which is one over 20 and one over 60, but these values are not normalized yet. So we haven't normalized them then. So this equation, just, you know, like directly, if you apply to it, it will directly give you the actual values of the probability. So if you simply take the equation, substitute in it, it will give you the final value, which is simply 0.25, for a customer to retire in this case. And basically this customer is not eligible to retire. All right, so now it's time for a mini challenge. What I want you guys to do is to calculate the probability of no retire given the features of the customer, okay? 
So simply put, I just want you guys to go there, do the same math again, but do it for the other case, which is the probability of a customer not retiring or belonging to class one, given their features, which is basically age and savings as well. So please go ahead, pause the video, and I will see you guys after the challenge. All right, I hope you guys were able to figure out the challenge. Here is the answer for you. So again, we're gonna go there, do exact same math as we have done before. So the probability of no retire given the features is the P of X given no retire times P of no retire divided by the marginal likelihood, which is PX. So simply put, the probability of no retire, which is my prior probability of not retiring, okay? So if you go here, you will find that it's simply 20. Again, we're talking about the red class right now. So we have 20 data points divided by overall 60. So 20 divided by 60, that's the first part. And then probability of X at given no retire, which is simply my likelihood in this case, is simply, if we go here, if you guys remember, we're gonna draw a circle. We're gonna divide how many red circles were there, which is three, because I'm talking about class zero or the red class. So three divided by the overall number of red points, which is 20. And then I'm gonna calculate the PX, which is simply the number of similar observ observations divided by the total number of points. Again, we're gonna go there, draw our circle, remove our green dot. This is out of, out of question. We're not talking about this one right now. Here we assume that all of them belong to the same color. So all of them, you know, like we ignore the color. So it's, we have one, two, three, and four. So we have four points divided by the overall number of points, which is 60. Think of the marginal likelihood as kind of a normalization, a normalizer. So when you do that, you can simply multiply 20 divided by 60 times three divided by 20. And you divide that by four over 60, and that will give us 0.75, which obviously makes sense because I can simply go ahead, ignore all these calculations and just get the probability of non-retiring is one minus the probability of retiring, which is what we have here before. So one minus 0.25 will generate 0.75 and that should basically uh, give us the exact same answer as we got here, okay? All right, and that's all I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are gonna go ahead and apply our naive base classifier and train our classifier, and then we're gonna go ahead and assess our classifier. So please stay tuned and please enjoy Data Science for Business Course, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.